And this dua is well known and in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say that Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-bukhul wa a'udhu bika min al-jubn wa a'udhu bik an uradda ila ardar al-umur wa a'udhu bika min fitnati al-dunya wa a'udhu bika min azaab al-qabr Subhanallah Five things Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to take he used to ask refuge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to seek refuge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him, these five things, subhanallah. And one of the first one is that, al-bukhul, subhanallah, to be miser, to be stingy, subhanallah, to be miser, a Muslim and mu'min, it is not his character, it is not his behavior, it is not his habit to be a miser, to be stingy, subhanallah. To refuse, to deny, to pay wealth where it's supposed to be given to. It does not mean that when you're trying to economize or try to keep something in a well balance, it doesn't mean that you're a miser or you're stingy. In the other words, if you don't want to be extravagant or wasteful, you are not a miser, subhanallah. If you don't want to waste your wealth, or buying something that unnecessarily you don't need it, you are not a miser and you are not stingy, subhanAllah. It is well recommended that not to be extravagant or become musrif, someone who always spends more than he needs. Islamically is not allowed that. But the book, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about is that to refuse and deny where it is faral or wajib for you to pay that, like the zakah, like sadaqah, subhanallah. Then if this thing becomes very difficult for you to do it, to fulfill it, subhanallah, then it's a bukhul, subhanallah. And salabatullah wa salamu alayhi many a times another hadith, he said, the bukhul is not something good. The people before us, Ahlaka man kana qablakum subhanallah The people before you as an ummah has been destroyed because of bukhul Salabatullah wa salamu alayhi fi hadith abhi hurayra he said it hadith jabir ittaqu shuh fa inna shuh ahlaka man kana qablakum hamalahum ala ansafaku dimaahum wa qada'u arhamahum subhanallah The people before us the bukhul and the shuh the maisa and the stingy it carried them all the way to the point that where they need to disconnect their relatives, subhanallah. And also encouraged them to the point that where they need to fight each other because of a bukhul and shuh, subhanallah. It is not on a character of a mu'min to be miser or stingy. That's the first point. In a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam historically, the people of Ansar, they used to have leaders clan, sub-clan, clan, sub-clan, sub they use what you call it today, a leader of the tribe. So, Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, one particular time, he asked the people of Bani Salama, he said, Man Sayyidukum, Ya Bani Salama, or people of Bani Salama, who is your Sayyid, who is the leader? And they said, our leader is Al Ja'ad ibn Qais. Al Ja'ad ibn Qais, it's our leader. Ala annana nabkulu. The only problem, he has the Bakhil. He's our leader as a tribe, but the only problem he has, he's a bakhil, he's a stingy, he's a miser, subhanallah azza wa jal. Salabatullahi wa salamu alayhi, he beautifully responded and he said, wa ayyu da'in, subhanallah, wa ayyu da'in adwum min al-bukhul. What kind of sickness is worse than being a miser or being a stingy, subhanallah? There is no habit more awful, more bad and more worse than being a miser when you are Muslim and a Mu'min, subhanallah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salabatullahi wa salamu alayhi, he continued, he said, Bal sayyidukum ja'adul abiyal umar ibn majmuh. I change him from that post, I'm going to demote him. I'm going to sack him from that position of being a leader of Bani Salama. And I'm going to appoint another person by the name Umar ibn Jamuh. And Umar ibn Jamuh was a kind of a lame person. His leg was not well fit, but he was very generous person, subhanAllah. Whatever he has, he shares with his people, with his friends. And salawatullahi wa salam alayhi, he says, a character of a leader, it should not be a miser or stingy, subhanAllah. 
then to the point Rasulullah is changing a leader of tribe because of this problem he has been stingy and wise shows you the extensive it shows you how bad this kind of habit could be in a mu'min or in a Muslim life subhanallah azza wa jal. The second point is Salawatullah wa salamu alayhi says Wa a'udhu bika min al jubn subhanallah azza wa jal. Oh Allah I seek refuge from you subhanallah to be coward subhanallah timid a cowardice subhanallah someone who is very unbrave someone who does not have the courage to do the right thing that's a jubun subhanallah and as you know min al kabair one of the biggest dhunub the muslim could commit is that at tawalla yawm al zahf when the people are fighting for haq and badil if you are not brave enough or you become so cold, that means you are not going to face whatever it is going on there. Then, and that's a big dhambi, min al-kaba'ir, subhanallah, atawallu yawm al-zahb. It can take you to that point. So, a jubn, it is not a habit of a mu'min, subhanallah, azza wa jalla. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. He used to seek refuge Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa a'udhu bika min al-jubn, subhanallah, azza wa jalla. The third point is Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. He says, Wa a'udhu bika an uradda ila arda lil umur. Subhanallah. O oh Allah, I seek refuge from you, Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. For me to go all the way to the age of senile, to get so old, to the extent that I cannot do my wajibad, to the extent point that I will be a burden to my family, to my relative, to take care of me, Subhanallah. وَمَنْ نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّسْهُ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ It's an ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فِي الْخَلْقِ أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ أَرْضَ لِلْعُمُرِ لِكَيْ لَا يَعْلَمَ بَعْدِ عِلْمٍ شَيْئًا Means that when the person gets so old to the extent that he does not know what is right and what is wrong لِكَيْ لَا يَعْلَمَ بَعْدِ عِلْمٍ شَيْئًا and he does not know anything after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the strength or the knowledge to know everything. But because of the age, the age has overtaken him, his aql. His aql has changed because of the age, subhanallah azza wa jalla. Then Rasulullah, he used to say that, Oh Allah, do not take me to that point of getting that kind of age, subhanallah azza wa jalla. You become a burden to your family, subhanallah, to feed you, to clothe you. To make you whatever so you are you are just existing as a human being living but there's nothing even you cannot even make a salah because you don't have the aql enough you cannot make whatever supposed to be done in terms of wajibat because of your age then ardal al-umr rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to say that oh allah protecting me to the age that i'm going to that ardal al-umr to be a senile to be so old age subhanallah azza wa jal and the fourth point is salavatullah wa salamu alayhi he says وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الدُّنْيَا سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ Oh Allah, protect me and I seek refuge from you to protect me the tests and the trials of life سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ Life has so much tests and trials to the point that سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ Some people when Allah سبحانه وتعالى tested them and tried them they lost the entire iman نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْفِتْنَةُ الدُّنْيَا الْفِتْنَةُ الدُّنْيَا Salawatu Allahi wa salamu alayhi is taught in many other ahadith and he said that The fitna Innahu lam takum fitnatun fil arli Mundu dhara Allahu dhuryati Adam A'adamu min fitnati al-dijal Wa inna allaha lan yab'ath nabiyyan illa haddhara ummatahu al-dijal Wa ana akhiru al-anbiya Wa antum akhiru al-umam Wa huwa kharijun fi mukum la mahalata subhanallah He said the biggest fitna someone can face in this world is fitna to Masih al-Dijal Subhanallah The one ayat Dijal And Rasulullah he said There is no Nabi before me except that he warned his people about fitna to Masih al-Dijal And he said I am the last Nabi And you are the last Ummah and the Masih al-Dijal will be raised and will come from the last Ummah. La mahalata subhanallah. It is inevitable. It's unavoidable that Masih al-Dijal will come out in this Ummah because we are the last generation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creation as an Ummah subhanallah. Ummah to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he emphasized many times the biggest fitna, Masih al-Dijal. There's so many other fitnas subhanallah. The fitna of the wealth, 
the fitna of the children, the fitna of the family and the wife, the fitna of dunya, a lot of fitna that can distract you from the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can deviate you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it's always that to remember to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah protect me min fitna to dunya. Oh Allah protect me min fitna to dunya. This kind of du'as, it's a day-to-day -day life. The more you make it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possibly accept this du'a from you and protect you from all this fitna in the dunya, subhanallah azza wa jal. The last point, salavatullahi wa salamu alayhi, he says, wa min adabil qabri, Allahumma ya rabb, wa a'udhu bika min adabil qabri. Oh Allah, protect me, and I seek refuge, subhanallah, from you to protect me, adabul qabri, subhanallah. Adabul qabri haqqun. The punishment in the qabr, it is something that exists in subhanallah. A hadith of Rasulullah mentioned many a time in subhanallah azza wa jalla. The qabr and the grave, imma bisharatun bil jann, wa imma indharan bil adab, subhanallah. There's only two ways. When someone, we put him into the qabr, it will be either a good news for him for what is to come in terms of entering the jinn of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or it's going to be bad news for him to wait the adab of Allah in the day of the qiyamah. إِمَّا أَن تَكُونَ رَوْلًا مِنْ رِيَادِ الْجَنَّةِ وَإِمَّا أَن تَكُونَ حُفْرًا مِنْ حُفْرُ النِّنَاءِ That's what Rasulullah said in another hadith. The qabr, hayatul barzak, when people die, we put them there, it is the beginning of the Akhirah, subhanallah. And there would be only be two ways. Imma Jannah wa imma Narun, subhanallah, azza wa jal. So for a Muslim, all the time he has to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi tashahud al-akhir, fi kulli salah, in every salah, the last tashahud we make, umin fitnat al-dunya, umin fitnat al-mahiyah wal-mamat, umin fitnat al-masih al-dijah. It's always mentioned that, and Rasulullah recommended, and sin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's best if you could memorize this kind of dua, so you can read at the end of every salah, the last tashahud of the salah, subhanallah azza wa jalla. We passed in our previous halqa that, there's a fourth dua that Rasulullah make at the end of the salah, after the tahiyyat, and that one of them was that, وَمِنْ فِدْنَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْمَمَاتِ وَمِنْ فِدْنَةِ الْمَحْيَاءِ وَالْمَمَاتِ وَمِنْ فِدْنَةِ الْمَسِيحِ الدِّجَالِ so this kind of fitna requires you a lot of dua to be protected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can protect you if you keep making of dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this dua, they are not there just for, out of curiosity. They are there to be used, to be practiced, and to be asked through it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your dua. So this five, four duas, it is every day-to-day -day life in our life that we face in subhanallah azza wa jal inshallah ta'ala i'm going to repeat hadith one more time inshallah ta'ala the hadith begins on mus'ab bin sa'id radiyallahu anhu and sa'ad bin abi waqas radiyallahu anhu kana ya'mur biha ula il khamsa sa'ad bin abi waqas he used to command and order in this five dua and he used to say that it is the hadith of Rasulullah I had from Rasulullah. Nabiullah is saying, Allahumma inni ya'udhu bika min al-bukhl. Oh Allah, protect me and I seek refuge from you. Al-bukhl, amraiza, to be stingy. Wa a'udhu bika min al-jubn. Oh Allah, protect me to be coward, to be timid, unbrave person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Wa a'udhu bika an urad. إلى أرض للعمر أو الله بروتكتيمي to be taken back to the old age until my mind becomes like a child سبحان الله عز وجل وأعوذ بك من فتنة الدنيا أو رسول أو الله بروتكتيمي the tests and the trials and infliction of the tests and the trials of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in this dunya سبحان الله it is all not only the target of مسيح الدجال you might not reach to the time مسيح الدجال is coming to this world but there's a lot of فتنة before that there's a fitna at this time as we sit in here. In every family, they have their own fitna. With a child, with a wife, with a wealth, with some everything. There's a fitna. Anything that deviates you from the remembrance of Allah, anything that interrupts you are remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, becomes a fitna for you in terms of deen subhanallah azza wa jalla. Na'udhu billahi min dhalik. Wa a'udhu bika min adhab al qabri. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect me. The punishment of the grave, subhanallah. The ulama has written a lot about adab al-qabri to the extent that they can also mention that things that can lead you to have adab al-qabri, subhanallah, azza wa jal. Things 
can lead you to have this kind of punishment inshallah ta'ala we will come to another halqa bi'idhni Allah ta'ala wa jazakum Allah khairan wa ahsan ilaykum may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the hidayah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand the hadith of Rasulullah and give us the courage to make practice upon it wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad jazakum Allah khairan